Hey everyone, welcome to the sew along for the sleep set. Um, this is kind of a more intermediate pattern, I would say, because it does require knowledge of binding and also how to do a lettuce hem. But I'm gonna go through all of that. I'm gonna break it down, hopefully really easy, so that um, even advanced beginners or new beginners could try it. Um, we're just gonna jump right in. I'm gonna try to take it slow and explain everything thoroughly. If you have any questions at the end, let me know. Okay, I apologize in advance because my kids broke my tripod, so it sometimes falls. If the camera falls, I'll fix it right away, but I apologize if that happens. I gotta order a new one. I only just now realized that it happened. Um, so we're gonna start with the top. So I have my front bodice, my back bodice, and my binding. The first thing we're gonna do is bind the two center seams for the neckline. And I have a binding tool on my machine. It is really made for a cover stitch, but I tape it on. <laughs> I just like kind of eyeball where it should be lined up and go with it from there. And it works out pretty well, so I just keep doing it. Um, so I just cut a really long strip of binding. If you're not using a binding tool, you're gonna wanna use the measurement chart to cut the accurate measurements and kind of go from that. I need to find my seam ripper so I can fit this through. So basically you just slide it through. Um, and there is a tutorial for this too, I believe, on the main Roland page and also on the Instagram in the story section or like where you can view um, saved stories. But it's pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it. It definitely takes some practice. But once you use it, it makes binding just so much easier. So I have my binding tool. Amazing, buddy. I have my binding tool. I have my double needle in like <laughs> and I have it my tension set to nine my stitch length set to five I usually do 4.5, but with the binding tool I find that it feeds through a little slower So I need to lengthen the stitch even more so I'm just gonna go ahead and get started on binding this two necklines Okay, so now that I have my two neck bands here, or neck bindings sewn on, um, I'm going to the measurement chart and seeing what the shoulder gap length should be. I'm doing 2T, so the shoulder gap should be four inches. Um, it's right in the directions, instructions, yeah. Not in the actual pattern itself. So make sure you print out that page. It's really useful to keep all of your measurements intact. I just put it right with my pattern where I store my pattern. Um, so that I can refer to it easily without having to pull out the instructions every time. Okay, so now we're going to do our side seams. Um, that's the seam that goes like under the armpit and then up over the shoulder. So the straps. I'm going to put it right sides up and I'm going to start feeding it into my binding tool. And... start going okay so it just went to right where my neckline band is so now I'm going to measure I'm gonna start going and I'm gonna go until it's about four inches because that's what my shoulder gap should be so let me measure yep okay so I'm gonna start feeding it in Just enough. So there's my strap. 
easy peasy. So I just measured, so there was a four inch gap right here. Um, so I measured where the binding went off and then four inches until where the binding connected to the back side. And then it goes all the way down along the armpit, straight around. And then the next thing we're gonna do is put it right sides together and then just serge the side seams closed like we typically would on a shirt. Okay, so now I have my side seams lined up from binding down to the hem, and I'm going to serge the sides together. So when I'm doing this, sometimes binding, because it's so thick, it doesn't feed evenly in. So what I'm gonna do is put it under my foot and all the way up to where the needle is, so that there's no room for it to shift at all before it gets um, surged together and stitched in place. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my embroidery needle and tuck in the seams, or the serger tails rather. Easy peasy. Okay, turn this right side out. So this is what our top looks like for right now. We are not gonna do anything else to it until we start doing the shorts because I don't wanna change my serger settings for the lettuce hem until I'm going to be lettuce hemming everything all at once. So set this aside and we'll get started on the pants. Okay, so now to get started on the back, we have the front and the back of the bottoms, the elastic and the waistband here. So the first thing we're going to do is serge together the two crotch seams. Um, so we'll lay those right sides together and then serge that. Right, and now I'm just gonna go ahead and line up the side seams. on both sides, right sides together, and serge those as well. Okay, so we've got those serged together, right sides together. Now I'm gonna take my waistband, put it right sides together, and serge the short seam here. Okay, and now for attaching the waistband, I'm going to turn this right side out. And then take the waistband and also put that right side out and then fold it in half lengthwise so it's kind of hard to see because again my kids broke this um, but here's the waistband and I'm just gonna fold it in half wrong sides together so that it looks like your typical waistband and then I'm going to Take the back seam and line it up with the center back and then pin in quarters. Go and serge around the entire edge. I'm gonna leave a little gap right where the back seam is. So I'm gonna leave like a two to three inch gap there so that we can insert the elastic after.
And I just surged off leaving this little gap right here so that I could insert the elastic. Okay, so we're back at the end. I just wanna make sure that your elastic didn't twist at all throughout here so that it lays nice and flat. And then we're just going to butt the ends of these together so we're not overlapping. We're just butting them together. And we're gonna to put it on a very short, wide zigzag stitch and just zigzag along here to secure the elastic ends together. So now we're gonna top stitch the elastic. So I set it on a very long straight stitch and I'm just gonna start right at the back and I kind of just eyeball where I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna do two of them. So on my machine, I have like a little grid over on this side of the needle. And so I'm lining up the first time with, for the first row with the two and then I'm gonna move it over and do the next stitch the next row so what i'm going to do is just slightly pull so that the elastic lays flat but isn't stretched pull it off i'm going to trim my threads okay so you can see the top stitching goes all the way around nice and even and pretty sorry i'm working in tight space right now So our final step is to do the lettuce hem. And I'm gonna show you how to do it on my machine. If you have a different machine, I don't know if it's a different process or a different setup, um, I have no idea. I've only ever worked with this Brother um, 1034D, very basic serger. Um, but it's actually really easy to do. Um, I think that I learned to do it when I was like, um, a pretty advanced beginner um, but I do think that if you just follow step by step it's very easy to do so I'm going to take you through how I set up my machine for it and then what I do to get a really nice very exaggerated lettuce okay so the first thing you want to do is remove your tray and then open up the door here I don't clean my machine nearly as often as I should as you can see um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the stitch finger which is this right here um, so you'll see if your machine is clean you'll see that there's these two little orange arrows here and that's just to show you where to put it back in so you just push on this little lever right here and your stitch finger will pop right out and if you have this machine it has like this little like holding area for it so that you don't misplace it so you just click it right into there. Now your stitch finger is removed, super easy. We're done with that part. We don't have to touch that again. You can put your little tray back in here. Next thing we're going to do is cut our top left needle thread. And then just surge until the thread isn't there anymore. Okay, so now I only have my right needle thread still intact. It's really hard to do this left-handed. Okay. Now I need to find my little Allen wrench so that I can remove the left needle completely. So raise your needle. Sorry that my camera's moving a ton. I'm holding it in my hand while I'm trying to work. So it's really difficult. So just loosen this up. Pull out your left needle, put it somewhere safe. Make sure your right needle stayed in place and then just tighten that back up. This always fights me so bad I'm coming out. So now we only have our right needle threaded. Now we come to the side and we're gonna set this on R for roll 10. Why is it so hard? 
R for roll time, R for roll time, and then we're gonna put this all the way down because we want our fabric to stretch as it feeds through. Last thing we're going to do is we are going to tighten our tension over on this side. And that's all I do. Some people loosen this tension. I find that my stitches get a little wonky when I do that. So I do not loosen that at all. I only tighten my lower looper. Pop my tray back in and we're ready to go. It's really that simple. So the first few times I did it, I had to watch a video every time to remember the steps. But now I let us hem fairly often. So it's pretty easy to remember. You just remove the stitch finger, remove the left needle, set everything to rolled hem and adjust your tension. And you're good to go. Four easy steps. All right, so now let's get started. So in my machine right now, I have the pants or like the shorts for the sleep set and I have the leg hole. So that's what we're gonna be lettuce hemming is the two leg holes. I have it started right at the crotch seam. You can see the crotch seam right here. Um, so I start there so that you can't see where I start and stop. The key to a good lettuce hem is to really stretch your fabric as it's feeding through. But you, if you're also working with such a small margin because you're only using the right thread that you cannot pull even slightly to the side or your lettuce hem will come off of the fabric. So make sure you're watching right where your needle is to make sure it's catching the fabric the whole time. The first, I can't even tell you how many times I lettuce hemmed, I would, it would go off the fabric and I couldn't figure out why. And it was as simple as my hand resting on the fabric here was creating just enough tension to pull it off track. So I try not to touch the fabric over here at all and just pull from the front and the back to get maximum stretch. The more you stretch, the more lettuce you'll get. And they're eating pepper. And the kids are eating peppers. Thanks, bud. you started you're just gonna search off like you typically would and then I just cut right where it is where, where I ended um, it's such like a tight stitch that I've never had it unravel and I like I said I lettuce hem pretty frequently um, so you can see how lettuce it is okay baby you're okay you need to go back go back to eating nice and lettuce -y. and now we're just gonna do the same thing to the other leg Okay, so here's a perfect example. I just let my hand rest on the fabric real quick and look at that. So I'm gonna have to go back over this little strip here. That was an easy enough fix because it was just a really small area um, but that's what I mean by you have to be so careful that you're catching the fabric look at that lettuce I love it okay so now I'm gonna go and just do the same thing with the cami top so I have the cami and I'm just gonna go around the whole entire bottom 